I mean, they cause you a feeling of resentment. If anybody ever looked at you, you can see resentment in people's eyes. Because yeah. yeah. it's like, I can't stand oh. you. <laughs> Come on, it's in your eyes. If you ain't even got to say nothing, Mother God. You just look at people. And then your nose just open up. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Your lips just do stuff that you ain't telling to do. <laughs> Am I right about it? Your neck gets stiff. Come on, like you in slow motion. I mean, stuff happens when you have resentment. Not only do you have resentment, it causes anger. Uh-huh. A lot of people, we say, but we got anger issues. Amen. That's what Peter's talking about. Peter said, I used to have anger issues too. That's why he qualifies to talk to me. Because he's not the same Peter in Luke 22. He's not the same Peter in John 21. He's not the same Peter in the gospel. I'm looking down over his life. And Peter has grown. He said, don't worry about it, boo. I had attitude problems too. He said, I had anger problems too. I had resentment problems too. You know, I've been hurt and I used to take my hurt out on everybody else. But now that I've grown up a little bit, now I know how to put that thing in check. So since I ain't gonna be here that long, let me scrab you a letter and tell you how to keep it in check too. Come on, help me somebody. That's why I like the Bible so much. See, some people look at the Bible and say, this is 66 books of mess. This is 66 books of stuff I don't understand. But when I see the Bible, I Let me give you an example. I'm gonna get ready to close. I got, 
I got to tell you a few more scriptures, but the best example I got is, uh, what's that, uh, the little show where the people, the Beverly Hillbillies, they were poor, and, and for dinner, Dewey may wake up for Dewey, for dinner they would eat possum, I'm messing with you. <laughs> for, for, for dinner, the Beverly Hillbillies, they used to eat possum, right? And, and they just eat whatever they found, dang because they were poor. So if I find a frog, baby, I'm gonna eat a frog. And, but, but one day, they were shooting at some oil, and up from the ground came a bubbling pool. It was oil. So the Beverly Hillbillies, they became rich. Am I right about it? Y'all seen the show? Sometimes you just gotta break it down. It's called a parable. It's an earthly meaning. Well, it's an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. Well, when Granny and them got rich, they moved to California. And Granny and them was the richest, one of the richest families in California. But guess what? Granny and them was still eating. They were still trying to kill possum and eat turtles. Because Granny and them was rich, but they didn't know how to act rich. Because they never trained themselves. We don't have to kill possums no more. I wish y'all had Once you get offended, I wish I had some real folk in here. 
<laughs> we gotta get rid of offense. Three things as we prepare to close. Three things about offended people. Number one, they don't live peaceful lives. When you are a person who is easily offended, you don't have no peace, you know why? Because you fight every single battle. You have not learned to choose your battles. You have not learned to say, you know what, this battle right here is not mine, this is the Lord's. This battle right here, you have not learned to look past people's faults and see their needs. You have not learned to say, you know what, this ain't even worth it. You understand? Listen, if you're ever going to keep a family together, a marriage together, people who are caught in relationships, you got to choose your battle. You cannot fight every single battle. Because if you do that, you know what you do? You toss and turn all night. And you know what? You're rehearsing what you should have said. You ain't got no peace. And instead of meditating on God, instead of meditating on what you want God to do in your life, you too busy saying, I should have said it. Forget you, I can't stand you, I'm going to beat you up. You know what I'm saying? You do think about stuff that you should have said in your mind. Number two about offended people. They don't practice forgiveness. I just said Matthew 18, 21. Peter said, how many times should I forgive? Seven times? The Lord said no. Seventy times seven. In other words, make this a part of your life. Number three about offended people. They become prisoners of their pain. When you are a prisoner of your pain, you cannot receive the blessing of the Lord because you are not open to receive the blessing of the Lord. Because when God tells you something, he can't even get through to you because you got a big wall up in your heart. You got a big wall up in your mind. You got a closed hand. And if there's some people, I want to put some money in your hand. I can't put no money in the hand. Your fist is tight. When people are offended, they tight. They mad. They rigid. You understand what I'm saying? And they can't get blessings from God because God blesses those who are open, who are ready to receive. Yes, Lord. It's just like if you if somebody got locked up, the first thing the police say is lift your hands. It means that you surrender. You ain't got nothing in your hands. And God wants to bless us. But what he wants is a true surrender. I ain't got nothing in my hands. Everything I had, I'm giving it to you. I'm giving you my hurt, my pain, my offense. Lord God, I'm letting go. I know it's hard. I know what they did was, I know some of Is first you got to examine yourself. Because some of that offense is not about other people. It's about you. It's about me. You examine yourself. And you got to identify your basic attitudes. You got to identify the places where you're hurt. You got to identify the un your unforgiveness. You got to identify the places of, bitter of bitterness that's already in you for what somebody else did. Yeah. What somebody else did, you gotta, you gotta examine that independent spirit that say, I don't need nobody, this is me, and I don't got to have nobody in my corner, I got this all by myself. That's a wrong spirit. You got to identify this place where it's a lack of love, that said, I'm not loving no more because last time I loved somebody, they did me wrong, and last time I gave my all to somebody. If you, if you got that kind of mentality, you are dealing with some areas of offense. And last time I was faithful to a church, they didn't do me right, so I'm not gonna be faithful to another church. I just, I don't, I don't trust no preachers because every time, because I see what happened on TV, if you got that kind of mentality, then you are carrying a load of offense. Amen. So how do I get rid of offense? One of the ways we get rid of offense is by heeding the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord in 2 Peter, he is qualified to talk to us because he himself was rough, he himself was off the cuff, he was undisciplined, he was untamed. How do we handle offense? Well, you do some gospel, you do some Christian character arithmetic. He said, look, I ain't gonna let nobody get me in trouble with God. I ain't got ready to lose my religion with nobody. I'm not gonna stop growing. I'm already saved, but if being saved, Cause faith 
elector is the essential, uh, is the essential element to every elected believer. So you already got faith. Somebody say, I got faith. Okay. Can I teach you up in here? Yeah. He said, now, this is what you need to do. He said, now, add to your faith. Woo! Come on, what verse am I in? Verse 5? Am I in verse 5? 2 Peter 1? Chapter 1? Where am I at, Jayla? Uh-uh. It's a verse 5. It's okay. I just want to make sure I want y'all to see that I'm, I'm in the house. First, Second Peter, verse chapter 1, verse 5. He said, and this is what you do. He said, add to your faith virtue. Well, what is virtue? Virtue is my determination to do right. Virtue is quality. Virtue is substance. It's no good for me to just have faith. It's no good for me to just be saved. I need to add some quality to my walk with God. I need to add some substance to my walk with God. Because if I don't, guess what I'm going to be? A shallow Christian. How many of y'all seen some shallow Christians? You love God, but you're the worst example that I've ever seen. We don't want to be like that. Peter said, I don't want you to be like that. He said, so add to your faith virtue. And then he said, after you get your substance, and after you get your quality, and after you get your determination to be right, to, to do right, he said, because I want you to be uh, undeniably, uh, unquestionably, an undisputed champion for the Lord Jesus Christ. So after you get faith, and after you get virtue, the Bible said, add to your virtue now. National Negro Funds Fund said Black Negro Funds that are mine is a terrible thing to waste. It's not academic knowledge that we need you to get. It's not in degrees. It's not natural knowledge that we need you to get. But we need you to get the knowledge that is given through Jesus Christ and through the Word of God. Because if you don't get this, if you don't get you some virtue and some substance, then you just you just walking around, you empty and you have nothing to offer. Because soon as somebody move you, you're going to get out of your place with God and step right back into a place of evil. Oh, Say, add to your virtue knowledge. And then he said, after you add, this is Christian, Christian arithmetic. He said, after you add to your knowledge, he said, then I need you to get some self-control. Temperance. Mm -hmm. After you get you some virtue, get you some knowledge, get you some temperance. That means you gotta know when to hold them, when to fold them, when to walk away, and when to run. Uh -huh. Come on, somebody. You gotta know when enough is enough. Uh -huh. You gotta know when your mouth is causing destruction in your life and in others. Uh -huh. And I tell people all the time, even with, especially us women, because our mouth, we can tear a man down. We can shred him into pieces and make him feel like he's nothing. We can either build him or we can uh, kill him. Amen. We have the power in our mouth to destroy a brother or we can build him and make him think Man. I'm gonna tell you right now, my husband thinks he can fly. Because every time I see him, I say, baby, you're a bad man. I said, you're the coldest man I ever seen. I say, I like your shoulder, that's my favorite shoulder. Until I see that other shoulder. I mean, every time I see him, I say, I like your nose. I like your I ain't gonna talk back to me because I'm building him. I'm building his confidence. And one of the best things you can do. See, see, sometimes God has to hold back on us. Because some of our mouths are too bad. Honey, we should be and, and put him in the blender. Oh, then he said, get you some self-control. It's different. I mean, you gotta train your spirit. You gotta know when to say no. You gotta know when to say it's inappropriate. I could, I could, but I'm not. As you, you gotta say that sometimes yourself. You know, sometimes I let people think they won because I'm not in the context. If you think you won, baby, go on and win. But you know what I'm saying? You gotta know when enough is enough because there's too many relationships and too many family members. That's why it's striping the family now because some folks can't keep their mouth shut. Then uh -huh. he said after you get your temperance, then you gotta get some patience. That means you gotta wait and be patient with people. God was patient with you. He called us for years and years and years and, and some of us didn't even answer God. And, and then this Then he said, then get some godliness about yourself. 
Come on, that speaks for itself. God character. Then he said, after you get some, some godliness, then get some brotherly kindness. Come on, that means I'm kind to people who might not even be kind to me. Then after you get some kindness, then get some charity. And that translates into love. And then you know what? Because faith plus virtue plus love.